Hello. Hey there, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, another live stream of the Supple Live. Uh, we're mixing it up. Last time we did a, a bike build that went more or less okay. Uh, this time I thought I would share my other passion with you guys, and that is uh, painting. And you guys saw me throw it out there that if you're on the grams and you want me to paint uh, one of your Instagram photos, I would do so. Uh, if you tag it with PLP paint, you can see that in the fancy new ticker I added. And today that's what I'm planning to do. I'm gonna paint one person's uh, picture, hopefully get through that in the hour, and we'll go from there. So uh, feel free to just interact, ask bike nerdy questions you can ask about painting, or if you want to uh, learn, uh, or if you wanna talk about bike stuff, that's, that's cool too. Um, all right, so I see some people come in. Cal Cycling, Lou, I think I have Rafa frame bags. I think they're they're pretty sweet. I can dig the the pink pink stripe. I'm all about the pink stripe. Um, I think they're made by Apidura. Uh, Dan Show and Tell, howdy, nice to see you guys. Um, so I'm going to be juggling lots of things. You guys can't see my desktop, but I'm literally uh, I have the painting board or the illustration board right here. All my painting stuff to the left of it, and then like three inches for the mouse. It's it's going to be a tight tight fit. Uh, so you, so Dan, show and tell you were heading to Montana, uh, not Crystal Park. That's where, is that where the rock hounding is? That's where like people like dig for rocks and stuff. Uh, Sandra Chiabro, yes, Bob Rush show live. <laughs> I'm going to hopefully, uh, do Bob or, um, what's his name? So, some justice, uh, but Bob Ross, that is, um, yeah, you know, that, uh, Dan show and tell Crystal, uh, Park, that's along, I believe, the, um, the Great Divide route, if I'm not mistaken, like passes through there. I know we stopped there uh, for a picnic uh, on like a mini bike tour once, and it was, it was a pretty cool spot. So, sweet. Well, glad to see people are trickling in. Uh, Joe Umbrell, hi. Um, so yeah, Swanee 22, this is the uh, picture that we're going to be uh, turning into a watercolor, old school style. Um, I think he's based in Portland. Uh, he might show up to our Ravello meetup. So if you guys are in the Portland area, uh, Sunday, August 25th, uh, cruise by 11 to 1 a.m. Uh, we're gonna have a little mini art show. And by mini, I mean like very small paintings. Uh, let's see, who else? So Frey Smith, uh, breadwinner is on its way. Um, you know, it's it's taking a little bit on the longer side, but it's it's supposedly on its way. Uh, Justin Jones, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, Billy, breadwinner, hot topic. <laughs> June, you'll be there, awesome. Uh, let's see, Deep, deep Orbit Adventures. Uh, where did I get my painting training? Uh, YouTube, actually. Not, not just good for creating content, but uh, consuming it as well. Uh, I follow lots of... Uh, Watercolor channels on YouTube have taught myself. Uh, it also helps my dad is an artist. He does a fine art oil painting. So I inherited some some skill from him. Uh, not nearly enough, but but getting by. So yeah, cool. Well, I will get started on the drawing. Uh, keep asking questions. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how well uh, this goes. Uh, it might be a little ambitious to do more than one of these uh, per hour. Um, so this is a, a painting or this is rather a photo of a, a, ride, a ride that Ben did, I think with OMTM or with uh, our friend Todd Shank of uh, Salmon Creek Cycles. And it's, a Gifford, it's in the Gifford Pinchot in Washington. Uh, they run a, a gravel event there, uh, pretty awesome scenery. Uh, so let's get going here. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm actually using the, the computer as a reference here, is, is kind of sketch out the road because that seems to be like the one of the the points of focus here. So just real light pencil lines, nothing crazy. Um, I find with watercolor, uh, in terms of like the, the actual sketch, like less is more. Um, so just kind of really something to um, help guide the paint later on. And you guys can't see, but I'm like sticking my arm through a tripod trying to get this to work. So. Uh, it's a little slow going. Um, let's see. Yeah. Uh, ever drank bourbon while painting? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the 
although scotch more uh, uh, this time. So I know that the, the pencil drawing is coming in a little bit light. Apologies for that. Um, we will get paint in there eventually. And what I like about this scene is actually, you know, aside from the cyclists, which is pretty cool, this is, is this pretty imposing kind of rock figure here. So just kind of roughing that in, it comes to an interesting point here, and then back down the other side. Um, yeah, so looking good. And then just some indications of where the shadows are. I'll probably not do like a one-to-one -one, uh, representation of it, uh, but we'll get close. So there's a distant tree line here, just sketch that in. I'm going to move it up a little bit higher than it is in reality just to kind of frame this part a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> let's see. <coughs> uh, Joe Garcia, what's up? From Flatlandia. <laughs> uh, Eric Moss, yes, and the former is not happy. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Florida, we haven't done any riding there. How is it? Like we've, we've heard kind of mixed feels about cycling in Florida. Uh, I've heard there's mountain biking, there's, there's a couple of bike packing routes, but generally uh, it's kind of a tough go in terms of traffic. So I'm just putting little indications of where uh, trees will be back here, again, really light, just to kind of suggest it. And then there are like these kind of taller trees right here. Um, and then kind of probably largest tree over here goes above that. And then it also looks like it casts a bit of a shadow, so be sure to capture that. Um, Bray Smith, have I ever heard of Bear Claw? Yes. Uh, based in Michigan, they do lots of tie bikes. Um, they, are, they are kind of pricey. I think par for, for tie. You know, they're one of the smaller boutique brands. Um, I was going back and forth with them, uh, hopefully to test a bike. But again, you know, it's a, it's a small brand, limited demo bikes. You know, if they're going to give a bike to someone, it's going to be, you know, a much larger media entity than, than Pathless Pedal. Uh, but I am aware of them. Uh, I forget which bike I was looking at. It wasn't their latest one, but they've got one that has a, a pretty uh, fun-looking geometry, you know, kind of shorter stay. Um, so it, it seems like a little bit rowdier gravel bike. So... Uh, Yes, a new show, Bourbon and Bikes with Bob Russ. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to sketch in uh, where the cyclist will be. Um, so shoulders are about there. Head comes to about here. And uh, for me, you know, one of the things I like about watercolor is that it lends itself to a little bit looser style. Um, and that's, I guess, you know, some people do pretty realistic stuff, but... My personal preference is kind of a looser style. Um, it's a little bit more of an interpretation than a one-to-one -one analog of a, a scene. So just sketching them out. Um, I love kind of like the, the posture of the cyclist, you know, the standing and climbing, very kind of iconic, um, communicates a lot of, you know, movement uh, just, just in posture alone. So that's where the rear wheel is. Uh, top tube, saddle around there. A down tube. Um, let's see. I've never tried latex uh, inner tubes. Um, I've heard that they're you know pretty amazing. I don't know if do they make them in 650B. So I'm curious about. Okay, so front wheel, and then gonna put a little bit more of a dramatic shadow just to kind of impart more movement. So uh, can someone tell me like how the audio is sounding? Is it laggy? Um, kind of hard to tell. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, have I had any time to ride the OB-1 Mark Boomershine? Yes. I uh, took it out a couple days ago. Took it out today right before a storm. Filmed the GoPro footage that I'm going to use for a bike review. And it's pretty fun. I think it's, um, you know, the bike it reminds me most of. Uh, would be the Salsa War Road. So kind of similar-ish geometry. I mean, it's essentially an endurance road bike, 650B dropper post. Uh, rear end is 425. I think the front trail, it's like mid, mid high, so, uh, or mid neutral. So I think it's in the 60s. So pretty responsive all around. 
Um, I love the gearing on it. I think it's got a box components rear cassette, like the big, big, big uh, cassette ring is 46. So I took up the you know gravel climb up here, didn't run out of gears, spun it, spun up really well. Uh, so so far so good. Pretty pretty stoked on it. Okay, it's Bray Smith. Thanks. All right, MJ John. Sounds good. Awesome. All right. I never know. I kind of just like have put my faith in the technology, and I hope it works out sometimes. Okay, so we've got essentially this big kind of uh, looming rock face here. It's got some facets. Uh, we got our gravel road. Can it indicate this grass line here? Um, so, like for me, one thing I like about watercolor is that it's it's creative problem solving. You know, you're trying to communicate the scene without being um, completely literal and work within the bounds of watercolor. So, you know, there's a distant tree line, um, and it looks like a dark green in the photo, but in painting to communicate that distance, you really have to cool it down. So paint it in more of a blue, um, just, just so it looks more distant. And you, you guys will see that a lot. It's, I'm not gonna, it's not colored by numbers. It's gonna be a little bit more of a inter interpretation of the scene. Because otherwise, you know, why paint it at all when you have the photograph? Um, so let's see. Okay, so I think I've got the basic sketch in. You guys can, I don't know how well it shows up. It's, it's pretty faint on purpose. Um, so let's see. How's it sounding on your end? Or you're not? Okay, good? Okay. <laughs> All right, so I, I think we'll uh, start putting some paint in. And that's, that's really just about it for the, uh, the pencil sketch. I'm going to define this guy a little bit better. And I did do a study of this earlier that I posted on Instagram. Uh, just to kind of get a sense of how light and dark things should be. Um, but it's definitely worth another go. I think I'll indicate a couple more trees there. So, all right. So if you guys have any, uh, you know, non-painting related questions or, you know, want to know about the, the re review bikes that we have coming up, uh, feel free to ask. So I'm going to do a technique that's... Uh, called uh, wet on wet if you're not familiar with uh, watercolor and it's where you, know, you kind of pre-wet the page uh, so that the paint will uh, kind of bleed into itself whoa didn't mean to do that okay so that was a that was an accident <laughs> in, in true Bob 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 Ross fashion um, okay so pre-wetting the page with just some uh, plain water. Um, let's see, it needs to be a review of the best uh, hydro hydronic weightlift power system for dropper post to out. Right. <laughs> so I've never used a, uh, a dropper post before until like the last two weeks, and now we've got two review bikes with dropper posts. Uh, do you guys, are you guys fans of a dropper post? I'm still trying to figure out like when it would make sense to use one. Um, I did find myself using it um, today, just kind of forcing myself to use it uh, on the descent. And uh, I can see where it comes in handy. It, it made it a lot easier to get into uh, the drops, which is nice. Um, and I could definitely feel that, uh, that lowered um, center of gravity which is also nice uh, when things got rough. So just putting in some uh, cerulean blue for the sky and then touching in some um, yellow ochre here. Uh, and I think I'm gonna let that dry for a second. So if you've ever looked at the sky, I know it looks like a hot mess. It'll, it'll dry a lot lighter. Um, it tends to get lighter near the horizon and also a little bit warmer. So that's why the yellow ochre, instead of just a, a completely blue gradient. I will add a little bit more blue up here. Just cover this guy up. Okay. It's trying to look a little natural. Want that to bleed, want that to bleed. Okay. So I'm gonna let this dry for a hot second. Um, 
Can I try talking like Bob Ross? Uh, Bob Ross, I don't have any mescaline, man. <laughs> uh, you know, what's funny is I, I watched a ton of his, uh, his painting shows when I was a kid. Um, I think I was really too young to kind of understand what was going on, but I, you know, his, his image has been emblazoned in my memory. Um, right, add a little supple tire right here. Just happy little bikes all over the place. I was thinking happy little bikes might be a fun kind of title for this kind of programming. All right, so while that's drying, I think I'm going to touch in um, a little bit of the, uh, the foreground here. Um, so in the photograph, it's fairly green. So I'm going to put a little diluted, like a warm yellow, uh, work a little bit around the cyclists. Um, I think the, one of the key here, keep key areas is trying to keep the the road um, light color like it is just to give a sense of where the road goes so let's do this and while it's wet I'm gonna touch in some green so this is one of the you know cool things about watercolor is that it does a lot of the work for you if you let it just and since it's wet on wet, it should still kind of bleed in without a harsh, harsh gradation. Um, yeah. So let's do that on the other side. And let's see. Yeah, Matthew, I'm including the cyclist. <laughs> um, you know, the cyclist is, you know, key part, but also very stressful just because it's, I feel like really easy to, to mess up. So I'm just going to put a warm tone on uh, where the road is. Probably won't be the final color, but just to kind of warm it up. One thing, um, you know, since I've been getting into watercolors is, you know, you kind of look at things a little bit differently in, in terms of, not necessarily objects, but painting shapes and warms and cools. Um, yeah. I mean, you hear, whenever you hear artists interview, right, that's all they talk about. Oh, it's all about light and shadows and warm and cool. And it's like, oh, now, yeah, it is. <laughs> They're not just BSing. It is about those things. Um, all right. So sky is still kind of, still kind of wet. Um, Let's see. Pedaling Adventures, we're live. <laughs> so Eric Moss, uh, droppers help me on rough, steep, twisty descents. Um, helps once my butt gets sore during long days. Uh, yeah, I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, you know, I'll be honest, like I thought that they were totally unnecessary at first, um, but I can kind of slowly start to see their value. Um, I don't think it's, I'd put it on every bike, but it would be fun to maybe have one bike uh, that has dropper posts. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So let's tackle this rock face. Uh, so looking at it, it looks a little bit more on the cooler side, I would say. So I'm going to try to mix up a cool gray. The primary, primary benefit is to be able to shift your body weight to the back of the bike on technical jobs. Yeah, I definitely saw that. Uh, I also, I also saw, felt like, um, you know, if, if I have a, my typical road bike set up, I'm usually not on the drops just because it's a bit of a stretch and it feels uncomfortable descending that way. But with the dropper post, it was way easier to get into the drops uh, and just kind of lower the overall um, uh, body weight or center of gravity. So just putting in cool gray. I might warm it up just in the front here. A little bit more variation as it gets, as things get closer, um, they get warmer. And as things get further, they're generally cooler. Um, it's a phenomenon known as uh, atmospheric perspective. 
you guys want to nerd out on, on that kind of thing. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. Just an illusion of depth. All right. Uh, let's see. I've been thinking about, uh, so breeder cycles. Um, been thinking about dropper posts, just don't know about it on my gravel. Maybe, yeah. It's, I'm, I'm not 100% committed to the idea of the dropper post. I'm keeping my mind open for sure with these test bikes, but we'll see. Okay, so we've got a rock that's painted. Everything, most of the white's covered. I left the cyclist unpainted just so, um, you know, probably paint like a purplish tone on his jersey so it really pops. Um, Matthew Bowler, what's the largest canvas paper you've painted? Not very big. I think I've got uh, some pads of 11 by 14 arches. Um, and it's, uh, it's stressful to paint that big. <laughs> so I, I, don't do, I don't go that big very often. I am bringing a couple larger ones to uh, Portland when we go to Ravello. But typically, I, li I like to work in these small sizes just because you, you get to do a lot of them. Um, and I'm still in that learning phase, so I feel like, you know, painting a lot on different pieces is, is more valuable than, than working on the large piece. Um, so Gabriel, do I ever miss long haul trucker with your affinity for shorter chain stays? Uh, you have this trucker 26 inch wheels and wouldn't call it exactly slow feeling, but maybe it's just me. Um, you know, we rode the, the trucker for a long time and got to know the bike really well. And when we toured, we toured with like 150 pounds of gear on it. So in my head, I just associate it with slow. Um, but no, I, I mean, I feel like I, I just like a shorter chainstay bike, at least 430, if not, um, if not shorter. I know Laura, she, you know, we're, we're kind of opposites in that regard. She, she does prefer a longer chainstay. So 430 to about maybe 440 is her, her sweet spot. So... You know, just because I like it doesn't mean that everyone should like it. It's, it's all preferences. But uh, for me, I like the shorter chain stay bike. Um, let's see. Yeah, so Masaga, a little bit shorter than the Trucker. Uh, Christian, I have not tried the Juniper Ridge. Uh, my verdict on the Ultra Dynamico tires. Okay, so here's the thing. He's got a couple versions of them. Uh, the ones I rode were the white, white tan wall white well, white rubber ones on the crust. And uh, the, the tread was a little bit more aggressive, so it had uh, like high raised uh, triangular nubbins um, that protruded a fair amount from kind of everything else around it. And it was great on gravel. Um, I think on the pavement, it was really buzzy, like you could hear it. Uh, I felt it was a little sluggish on, on smoother on, on pavement, but on like mixed terrain, if, if you're riding mostly like 80% gravel or, or dirt or something, then it's a good tire. Uh, it's not as ag aggressive as the, the Sendero, you know, but it's, 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 it's more, the knobs are more meaningful than like something on the, the horizon byways. So, uh, yeah, Matthew, 20 years or, or so past learning, yeah. I mean, I definitely think it's it's something that, you know, like anything, painting, bikes, whatever, uh, years to master. Uh, Sandra Chiaro, would you put a saddlebag on a dropper post? Uh, so I would probably not put, um, you can't put, if, you, if by saddlebag you mean a care dice, then no. But there are kind of seat bags, like the, like the, longish bike packing uh, poop bags that, that, that will work. <laughs> I've got a Blackburn one um, that would do the trick. Okay, so I'm gonna lay in these distant trees. These are dry enough. So just kind of hinting at the detail and actually you're really using it to frame uh, this rock. It's more of a framing device than anything. I think I'll try to vary the color a little bit as I get lower. Drop in some of the colors there. All right. And 
And then we'll do the same on this side, kind of continue that tree line. All right, so you can see by painting that fairly light, uh, it gets pushed back and it pushes the, the rocks uh, to the fore. Um, let's see, uh, Kushik Roy, yes, we've ridden the fat bike. Uh, we've got a salsa muckluck. Um, ride it mostly during the winter. And it can be fine, that's fun. You know, I think fat bikes are, are less fun than uh, they make it out to be. There's a real like narrow window of enjoyment for where uh, fat bikes are fun, especially in the snow. I'm gonna shut this door. Um, and because when the, the when the snow is fresh, you know, the, the bike just falls through and then it's gotta be patted down just right so you get good traction. And if you wait too long, it turns into ice and then you're just like sliding all over the place. So that's no fun for, for anyone. Okay. Uh, do I have an Instagram just for my paintings? Um, I put more on my personal Instagram, um, at Russ Roca. I'll put the bike theme ones on, um, on uh, the path less pedaled one. So. Let's see, Robert Stewart. Trouble with tape tearing up watercolor paper when you remove it. Yes. Um, so if I use just like masking tape that you would get at Ace Hardware, it tends to be really tacky um, or even just blue painter's tape. So this is kind of a low tack artist tape I picked up at uh, Michael's the other day, trying it out. It tends to, it tends to do a better job, so. Uh, so Eric, tired choice depends on terrain. Uh, Gravel Kings can be somewhat delicate. Uh, yes, that's completely true. <laughs> um, Dirtbag Dilemma, do you think it is important for creators to have another creative outlet? Yes, that is like one of the few things that is keeping me sane. <laughs> You know, because as fun as like the, the bike YouTube channel is, or, you know, just doing all the bike stuff, you get burnt out if, it's, if you're just doing one thing. So it's nice to have just different interests. <laughs> you know, keep, you know, rise the spice of life. All right, so what are we doing here? Uh, we've got the background, we've got the trees. I'm gonna start putting a little bit more color into <clears throat> this rock feature here. So I'm mixing up uh, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, kind of like the two most used colors uh, on many an artist palette, just because it makes a really nice gray called a Jane's gray. And you can make it warmer or cooler by changing uh, the proportions of um, burnt sienna or ultramarine. So when will I do a cooking video? Uh, you know, I have, I have many talents. Cooking is not one of them. <laughs> Uh, let's see, what are we doing here? Okay. So I'm attacking this with a little bit more of a dry brush technique. So not trying not to paint every little crack, but using um, you know, the, the side of the brush to kind of impart texture and get her done. I may go back um, and darken some other spots, but that looks, you know, in terms of like a representation of a, a rock face and, and facets, it's looking pretty good. I think I might smooth out some of the, um, some of the edges here. Might also warm it up a little bit in the front. Some yellow ochre. Uh, all right, Pedaling Adventures, see you later. Thanks for joining us for, for the time that you were here. Okay. All right. Yeah, Mr. Jack, um, I'm hoping, you know, like 
comments on our regular video is cool, uh, but there is a delay, so it'd be fun to uh, just interact with people more directly. Um, you know, like our situation, you know, we live in Montana, like I'm, you know, making internet uh, <laughs> by myself most of the day. So it, it, it's fun to just be able to in engage um, the viewers more. It keeps me sane. Uh, Robert Stewart, do you limit yourself to one brush size? Uh, no, I'll, I'll change. Um, you know, usually I'll, I'll pick a, a brush that's appropriate to this size paper. So this is what I'm using. <clears throat> Hand for scale. <laughs> uh, what is the best way to drink? What is the best drink to enhance a painting experience and why is it bourbon? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. <laughs> uh, Christian Sheehan, do any of your bikes the, uh, the st 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 ridden have st stand out as the most fun or the most beautiful? I think the most fun this year is definitely the the Crest Bambora. Uh, to me, it's a beautiful bike. I love that kind of Pepto Abysmal uh, pink color. Some people hit or miss, but I, I think it's cool. All right, so we've got a. Uh, let's put in some trees, man. Put in some trees. Let's change brushes here. I think I'm going to start with the distant trees on the top and move my way forward. So I've got these cool little uh, travel brushes. Whoops, uh, they're in like this kind of pill-shaped form, turn into uh, regular sized brushes. What do I think of the, Freddie Smith, what do I think of the Poseidon X? Um, don't know, um, have not, you know, I'm aware of its existence. I've seen other bike reviews, I've not ridden, ridden it. It seems like pretty good value for money. Um, but yeah, until I, I, I ride, t t generally until I ride the bike, I don't like to, to comment on it. Um, Cause you can make like assumptions on, on material and on geometry, but it's, it's really hard to say until you actually throw a leg over it. Okay, that makes us too green. <clears throat> okay. So there are these kind of funny trees popping up out here on the top, filling them in. Try not to make them too dark. I think I might have gone too dark on them though. So, let's see. That is like one of the challenges of watercolor. It's um, it's not very forgiving. You know, you can't can't make something lighter. So there's another kind of tree over there. And then let's bring it down here and then put a couple more. And so these act as a, a pretty nice frame for this rock, I think. Yeah, happy little trees. And then there's a couple of trees in the background there that we'll add now. Make that a little bit more paint. Um, yeah, living out here, a lot of trees to be to paint. <laughs> I feel like I'm painting mostly trees uh, when I go out for a bike ride and, and take pictures or bring the paint set along. Mostly trees. So it's good to have kind of a shorthand for, for what trees look like. Okay, cool. Can live with that. So now we've got a very distant tree line over here. Um, kind of a little bit less distant tree line. And then um, they, the goal is to make the trees darker and darker as they come to the foreground, uh, just because the contrast pushes the trees forward. So still many happy little trees to paint. I think I will tackle these, the trees over here. And those look fairly dark, and I'm going to start to introduce some green. And this is 
kind of a tricky position to paint because I'm half the time I'm literally sticking my hand through the tripod. <laughs> Um, okay, so, so these are kind of tall skinny trees, I definitely want to emphasize uh, the height in them. Happy little trees all over the place. <laughs> Uh, it looks like a good clump, so let's put one more here. Darken it up a little bit. So I'm using this paper that I don't usually use, and it's kind of not taking the pigment as well as I'm, as I want. Everything's coming out a little light, so <clears throat> that is a big challenge. Like different papers, just react differently to the paint, so you just have to. Roll, go, roll, go with the flow. Oops. Uh, there's kind of like some green bits, like right here. Try to blend that in a little bit. Use your fingers. <laughs> uh, Mr. Jack, let's see. Happy little trees. Where do I get the music in my travel videos? Uh, usually, um, there's a service that lots of YouTubers use called Endemic Sound. And it's you know royalty royalty free music, um, subscription based. So I think we pay I don't know I forget how much it is like ten bucks a month, and then there's like a library of um, of uh, music that you can use uh, that you don't have to pay for individually. So once you subscribe, it's kind of a, it's, it's not free, but you've, because you've already paid for it, but you're not paying individual licenses. So just adding some textures. Yeah. <clears throat> Bearded Cycler, will we ever come back to New England again? Um, yeah, so we've got plans to go to the Philly Bike Expo. I think we're I'm actually going to lead a panel there. Um, and how long have I been painting? Uh, just only a year, <laughs> so not very long. Okay, so we've got our trees, that tree. One more large tree here. Uh, I think I'm gonna work on some of the foliage. So let's see. Where'd that brush go? I'm gonna grab another brush real quick. All right. So I really like this, um, if you guys can see. This is kind of a goat hair sumi brush. And what's cool about it is that it gets really ragged and it's awesome for creating kind of textured surfaces. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna texture up the grass. Whoops, I got a little too dark there. Make it a little bit cooler as it goes to the background. A little bit more faint also. Just so there's a sense of, of um, kind of things receding. This is one of the things I really, yeah, I, I definitely struggle with is, um, you know, things can appear like a wall of green and if you paint it like a wall of green, then it just looks, everything's on the same plane. So you've got to, I don't know, slowly make these gradations so you know you can kind of control things in space, move things forward and back. So 
I might actually put some blue back here just to kind of push this grass back a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of blending. I can live with that. Um, let's see. Can you undo, Gabriel, can you undo mistake watercolor? Uh, no. <laughs> Once it's on, I mean, so watercolor, you work from lightest to dark, but you can't make something lighter. Um, I mean, I, I'll go over with like white gouache to kind of cover things up, but because it's a transparent uh, medium, once you lay something on there, it's, it's on there forever and you gotta kind of live with that mistake. So <clears throat> I think uh, unlike other medium, you have to really plan it. So when I look at the scene, I'm like, okay, that's the lightest part of the painting. I know I'm gonna do that first, then slowly layer on top of it because you can't, you can't go back. Okay. <clears throat> so thank you, Todd. Trying, still learning, but uh, getting there. You, sh you should see my paintings from a year ago. <laughs> so let's get some. grass there. Kind of blur it a little bit. Um, yeah, let's see. Do you think, I saw there, there's a question about Jones Bar and they got retracted, so sorry. Um, okay. Gonna make some of this area a little bit darker just so it looks like it's popping out of the foreground a little bit more. You can see why this brush is pretty cool. It's like uh, this texturing that it, that it does. And it's a cheap brush. This thing's like three bucks. <laughs> okay. So uh, as you can see here, hopefully, I mean, it's a little bit blurry. Um, so the, the further something is, less contrast, more gray, less defined details. And as it gets closer, you want to add more contrast, richer color, more saturation, uh, just to make it pop out more. <clears throat> At least that's what they say. All those YouTube tutorials I've been watching. Um, so, uh, Kushik Roy, how do I find a Jones bar compares to drops? Um, you know, those <clears throat> opposite sides of the spectrum. Um, so we've spoken to Jeff Jones and his intent for the bar is for, for the rider to be fairly upright. So most like a, a cruiser bike. Uh, a lot of people, I think, tend to make the mistake of moving the ends to where, um, to where a bike would be set up for a cross country position, but they're supposed to be really upright. And that's kind of the opposite of a, a drop bar when you think about it. So that's why <clears throat> not all bikes you know, people always ask about you know, Jones bike conversions. Um, definitely a certain type of geometry lends itself better to a Jones bike or Jones bar rather than you know, a drop bar. Uh, yes, you could kind of you know, hatch it on there, but it might not be the, the best experience. Uh, Danny, how am I liking the Jones bike so far? It's awesome, I love it. It's heavy though. <laughs> that, I would say that's my only complaint. I'm just putting some cool tones on the distant part of the road, trying to make it recede a little bit more. So it's not just like the same kind of wash of yellow ochre. Okay. So now we've got uh, this big kind of tree to add right here. Real defined shadow. 
and the cyclists and cyclist shadow and uh, some grass. I think we should be should be good. I'm generally kind of happy with it. It's uh, I feel like it's it's lacking a, a bit of contrast. This paper um, not used to this one. So uh, Eric Moss, have you changed your mind about any of the bikes you reviewed? That's a good question. Um, I don't think so. I think I, I feel largely the same about the bikes I've reviewed. I can tell you that there are some bikes that I was super excited about, but when I actually rode them, I was disappointed in them. <laughs> uh, Frey Smith, who has a supple award so far? Uh, I would say uh, the Crest Bombora by like a by a mile. <laughs> Although, you know, the, I will say the, the bomb track hook adventure has been surprisingly fun for a bike that, that's typically not my style. You know, it's got a front suspension and dropper post. You can just, you can ride stupid things with it. So it's fun in that way. Okay, I'm gonna put in this tree in the foreground. Gotta make it really dark to kind of stand out. It goes up pretty high. So this paint is pretty thick for watercolor here. <laughs> there we go. So it goes kind of down, keeps it mostly the same shape. Add some blue for the shadow. Down like that. Um, and then I'll put in little blades of grass here in the shade here. So just nice little detail. And we got that tree. Cool. Um, Mr. Jack, how long do I get to keep a test bike before sending them back? Uh, it varies, but generally, um, I try to get the, back, the bikes back to, to the brands within a month, so like a month and a half. Um, usually, I, I, my opinion's formed after about two weeks, and the rest of the time is just to kind of see if there are any surprises or if it kind of confirms or negates my initial impressions. But um, usually about a month and a half. Uh, Joe Umbral, do I find it easier or hard to go for a ride to just enjoy it without thinking about review aspects of the bike? Um, it's, it's nearly impossible for me to, to go out on a ride without kind of evaluating a bike <laughs> in my head. Um, just because I've kind of just trained my head to do that for you know, the last couple of years. Okay, so we got tree. It's looking good. Time to put in the cyclists. This is a always kind of nervous time it's really easy to wreck what would be a nice painting by uh, botching the, the figure. So <laughs> see if I can get them, get them right the first time. All right, so I think I'm gonna do the, the cyclists in, in kind of a cool uh, red, um, purple. I don't know if you can, it's about as close as it gets, all right. So Mr. Jack, how many years have I been re reviewing bikes? Uh, for the YouTube channel, uh, about two years. Um, so not too long, but I, I have ridden a variety of bikes over you know, the, the period of time I've been into bikes. But in terms of thinking about bikes uh, and handling and trying to describe them, uh, last two years. So. Is there any, uh, JSROM3, have there been any brands that have been upset with your review of their product? Um, it's, if, if they have, they haven't said. Um, 
I know I, I kind of gave the Gorilla Monsoon uh, a little bit of a lukewarm review, and the uh, Aventon, you know, I pointed out the the um, the alignment issues with the dropouts, <clears throat> specialized uh, uh, diverge. I kind of talked about how I didn't like the suspension because it felt vague and stuff. Um, a little sketchy, like really going into the corner hard. But um, yeah, none, none of them, none of the brands responded and said, we didn't like that. You know, I mean, I think you know, I try to make it pretty clear that you know, I appreciate them loaning the bike out. Um, but my biggest like value proposition of the channel is that, you know, I get to say what, you know, I want to say about the bike. Um, <laughs> I know some people think my, my bike reviews are overly positive, but I mean, it's, there hasn't been a true lemon. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, I think part of that is because bike brands can't afford to really create a, a truly crappy bike uh, in today's economy. So, Kenex, do I miss riding cargo bikes at all? Uh, I do. I do. I do on occasion um, dream about unearthing the, the blinky and taking that out for a spin again. Okay, let's paint the cyclist. Sorry guys, I have to concentrate a little bit here. <laughs> so much can go wrong at this part of the painting. I found that I try to paint the cyclist a little bit on the leaner side. It, t it tends to impart kind of action a little bit better. Uh, WC3415, do I miss long distance touring? Um, you know, to be honest, uh, Laura and I talk about this a lot. Like we, right now in, uh, this, this time of our lives, um, we kind of like the short tour a little bit better. <laughs> I mean, I feel like we, we did the, the long, you know, endless tour for long enough that the novelty faded away and it was just really tiring. So sometimes when we look at you know, people's photos of their endless journey, there's a little bit of yearning, but for the most part, it's like, it's just, it's just not us right now. So not to say that you know, we don't want to travel. We definitely have places we want to go, things we want to do, but is it kind of an open-ended bike trip like before? Uh, probably not. All right. So far, our cyclist is looking good. Have not screwed them up yet. <laughs> uh, okay, time to do the bike. I usually like to do the bike in a dry brush. So a little bit more expressive that way. Kind of loading up the brush with paint, wiping some of it off to get a nice texture. Okay. You know, like long distance touring, it's one of those things, um, I don't think it's a better life, it's a different life, you know? We, when we did it, it was uh, the right thing to do for us at, at that time. Um, but, you know, you change, you develop and your interests change. Like there's no way I would have gotten into video as much as I've, I've had if we were still touring or painting or fishing or, or something. You know, it's all like opportunity, opportunity cost. I know that's probably like the least romantic uh, answer, but <laughs> it's the truth. Okay, so doing the tires. Looks like a cyclist. Let's put 
it in the head here. Right, feeling good. Feeling good about that cyclist. <laughs> uh, Gabriel, did you find it hard to quit? Did you ever feel like you were giving up? Um, I would say, so when we set off, we had the parameter of, uh, you know, we're gonna keep traveling as long as it was fun. We weren't trying to, you know, do a route. Um, or some other kind of metric, it was as long as you know it was fun. So when it stopped being fun, you know we knew it was time to quit um, or to stop. I think the the tough part is in that when you travel for that long, you your identity is heavily invested in that of, of a traveler. <clears throat> and when you're not traveling, then there definitely is a period of feeling lost. But um, I think we, I don't know. I think we stopped at the right time, or we still love bikes. Adrian, got in the watercolor with my girls. Thanks to you, Russ. Lots of fun. All right, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> it's stoked. I'm stoked that you, you and the girls are getting into watercolors. It's, it's definitely a fun hobby, uh, a lot to learn, and you can take it with you everywhere. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> All right, let's put the shadow in on this cyclist here. And I'm going to do a little bit more dramatic shadow than what is in the photograph, just to impart a little bit more motion. And I'm going to darken up his back a little bit. All right. Looking good. I think it's looking good. <laughs> Beard Cycler, all right. Thanks for uh, tuning in. This very random uh, live stream. <laughs> cool. Yeah. We've got uh, some, some other fun videos planned for this week already. And um, maybe another live stream at the end of uh, the week. Um, we got some bars from Richie to try out. They're Venture Max, so might do an install of those. <laughs> Joe Umbro, glad that, that you think it beats summer TV programming. <laughs> okay, so we've got the cyclists, got the mountain. Um, let's put a little bit more detail on the road. Did want to put some texture up here. Trying to connect that a little bit better. Okay, that's looking good. Gonna switch back to uh, this guy, a little goat hairbrush. Ken X, I can't see the salsa logo on your cyclist bike. Ha ha ha. Yes. Um, I feel like I, every time I do a bike review, I want to be like, look, it's not a salsa. <laughs> yes, we review lots of salsa bikes. I get it. I get it. But they're good bikes, man. They, they kind of started the whole gravel thing. At least the gravel race, gra gravel race thing, they were definitely... Uh, the instigators. So, got some grass. I might darken it up a little bit more in the foreground here. Okay, looking good. Looking good. It looks like a thing. Um, what else? What's missing? Got the trees, got the rocks. Uh, Dan Show and Tell, ever do Ragbri? We have not done Ragbri ever. Uh, would be fun to do. 
Um, maybe in the future. Okay. I think I'm going to darken up a couple parts of shadow on that rock feature. I just feel like it needs a little bit more contrast. Hoping I don't screw up the whole thing, but we shall see. Trying to mix up a, a dark, dark wash here. Get into the shadows, make it all shadowy. This kind of shadow, shadow that goes off to the side there. And it goes kind of down here as well. Okay. So I think that looks uh, beta rocks. I can paint sometimes. <laughs> I'm trying, <laughs> learning. Um, Adrian, did the breadwinner get finished? Um, touchy subject. <laughs> Soon. Soon, people. It's on, it's, well, I don't want to say it's on its way, but it's, uh, it is. They sent us pictures of it. Um, Dang it. Trying to warm up the foreground just a bit. It's hard too because I'm working under tungsten lighting. So all the color is a little bit off. Okay. So I'm about to call this guy done. It does need a little bit of spatter effect. It can't be a watercolor unless you spatter it at some point, right? So we're going to do that. I uh, have not experimented with uh, watercolor pencils, Can-X. Um, they look cool. <laughs> Mr. Jack, how many times do we get asked about the breadwinner? Uh, many. <laughs> it's coming, guys. Can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't force perfection, apparently. OK. You guys ready for the spatter? Spatter. <laughs> oh, I didn't make it dark enough. Fail. Failed at the spatter. That's, that's the worst. <laughs> it's the coup de grace of uh, every watercolor. All right, let's try that again. So now it looks like rocks. Bam. <laughs> All right. So that is it. Man, I can't believe it took me like 40 minutes. Or it, oh, it's been over an hour since I've been doing this. OK. Well, there you go. Um, Brian, do we have uh, plans to tour the Katy Trail? Uh, yes, we do. Um, and it's definitely one of our bucket lists. You know, we want to do the Katy, the Sino, the Gap, the Nicholson. So many rail trails that we have not done. Um, but we, we hope to in the near future. We'll put it at that. So I think this is looking good. I'm hoping uh, Swanee22 will be stoked uh, about this. I think, uh, I guess I should sh sign it. Do I have a pen handy? OK. Got my fountain pen. And if any of you guys are fountain pen nerds, this is a Twisby Mini. Uh, piston filler. It's filled up with some uh, Noodler's uh, quick dry ink, one of my favorite pen ink combos. Painting looking great, thanks. Um, might scan this or something and post it in the community tab just so you guys have a better look. Uh, the lighting's not so great, you know, the camera's a bit, bit of the way off. So, does a photographer get the painting? If I were him, I would buy it. Uh, I, I've not decided what I'm going to do yet. Um, I feel like maybe, who knows? 
Uh, he's gonna. He's based in. He's in Portland, and we're going out there for uh, to do a little art show with Ravello. And he said he would come, so he'll get to see it in person at least. <clears throat> yeah, I would love to ride with Tim Mooney. I think uh, I'm trying to recall if I've met him in person. We've definitely communicated online. Um, he had us as a guest on his podcast. But uh, yeah, I think we, we've got lots of things in common. He likes color orange, loves Bromptons. I can roll with that. <laughs> um, I'll show you guys my art setup while I'm waiting for this to dry. And you can see how precarious this all is. I'm going to switch to a different screen here. So this is my computer desk, the water, everything. Oh, it's in transition. This is my uh, computer desk uh, where the keyboard usually sits. And uh, it was balancing everything very precariously. And uh, if I put my arm through here, it's actually around, there's a tripod like right here. Eric Moss, yeah, uh, SB Brown videos. Yeah, I was a huge fan of the pen habit too. I'm, I was really bummed when he, uh, he stopped the show. I can, I understand. Uh, it's really super easy to burn out on, on, the, on the YouTubes. So let's put a signature on this bad boy and call it done. If I can actually, what's this thing focusing on? All right. Bray Smith, thank you. Yeah, it's fun to paint. Uh, yeah, so if you guys, uh, let me know if you guys like this, uh, this kind of content. Um, I don't expect it to have mass appeal, but you know, I think it's kind of a fun format to interact. Still talk about bikes and do something else. Let's see. There you go, it's art, bam. <laughs> All right, so my favorite part is the untaping because it still looks like, you know, a hot mess a little bit when um, it's taped to the board. But when you take off the tape, it gets magically transformed. So looking good. Nice. Yeah, there's something about just that having that slight white border. It kind of elevates uh, it just a bit. So that got that. One last piece. And there it is. Looking good. Nice. Yeah. So uh, let me know if you guys want me to do more of these. Um, I do actually have a, I took five of my favorite recent watercolors and I've turned them into uh, postcards again. Um, I think I'm going to be selling them individually, so we'll, we'll have it on the big cartel shop. And I think that'll be kind of a just seasonal thing as we sell out of postcards. I might you know, get more printed. Um, so look for those soon. And if you guys are in Portland and can join us at Ravello, uh, we should have the cards by then. But you can see, you know, it's not going to be fancy. I'm going to uh, just have some sketch sketchbooks so people can flip through them. Uh, maybe have like one or two large pieces and a couple smaller ones. Um, I don't even know if I'll have that the originals for sale, honestly. But it's just it's it's a fun way to to get together IRL in real life. Uh, psychologist, yes, Filipino lineage, born in Manila. Um, cool. Well, I think that is it uh, for this live stream. Thanks again for for joining. Uh, me tonight hanging out answering or asking questions hope you guys enjoyed it and um, I guess we'll see you guys next time if you guys have any you know suggestions for other future types of live streams I was thinking one thing I could do since um, <clears throat> I'm also into tying flies is uh, tying you know my, my my five favorite bike fishing flies like all the flies you need to, to catch you know fish in, in North America um, 
And if you guys are into that, probably a different audience, but again, mixing it up, you know, it's part of this up of life is bringing in, you know, different aspects of life with bicycling. So I think I'll end it here, but uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. And uh, until next time, keep the self side down.